What's going on, everyone? <clears throat> uh, I am here with my full review of the Nikon Coolpix L810 digital camera. Uh, so to start off, you can pick this camera up right now at any uh, retailer that'll, that sells um, name brand cameras uh, for $200. Uh, it normally retails for 250 but there is a sale going on that right now that you can pick it up for 200 So $50 off, which is very nice. <clears throat> and for the price, considering how cheap it is, uh, the camera itself is very, very nice. Um, it has produced some very high quality uh, video. And it has also produced some very high resolution um, photos as well. So you're gonna you're not gonna be disappointed if you decide to pick this camera up. It's a it's very very nice. <clears throat> um, do keep in mind that this is not a uh, professional digital camera. Uh, it is an entry level uh, for those who are just now getting into. Uh, photography and but do not want to have a point and shoot digital camera and so this is would be the choice for you guys that are wanting that type of camera if you are someone in the market for a much higher end camera I would recommend getting a much more expensive uh, version or uh, type uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be from Nikon but it's up to you guys, whichever you want to do. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you guys uh, a quick rundown of the main specs uh, that you're going to find when using this digital camera. <clears throat> Excuse me. So first off, the lens has an aperture of 3.1 all the way up to 5.9, which is very, very good for low light conditions. Uh, it's also a 16.1 megapixel, so you're going to get some very high quality photos out of this camera. Uh, the video quality, unfortunately, only goes up to 720p. Um, I prefer 1080p, actually, but, I mean, oh well. It's still got some good quality in there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... Uh, also, the touch, or excuse me, not touch screen, uh, the screen on the back, right here, uh, this is a 3 inch LCD display, which uh, is not touch screen, unfortunately, so you have to navigate with all the buttons and everything like that, but the pictures and video when playing and viewing back on this display is very very high quality actually it's not something that you would expect from a display on a camera but after using it and uh, playing back video and stuff on it the quality is really really nice so i'd say that the display matches that of the quality that you're recording from the camera with so 720p so it's pretty cool um also the lens uh can focus up using macro uh, all the way up to one centimeter in length from the current object that you're trying to take a picture of. So it's got some very, very nice macro features in there. Uh, it does support face detection as well as autofocus. As um, also uh, auto white balance adjustment. Um... Okay, so that's pretty much the main specifications, like the detailed specs that you would uh, find. So now I'm going to give you guys a hardware look at the actual camera. Uh, so like I said before, you have your 3 inch non-touch screen display here, which is very, very high quality in my opinion. It's got some good color saturation. Ah, sat I can't pronounce that. Okay, um, it's got some good color in there and it's pretty good. Uh, so, let's start on the top here. Um, as you can see, there is dual microphones, which will give you stereo audio, which is 
awesome, in my opinion. That's really, really cool that you get some audio, uh, um, audio microphones on here. Or, why did I say audio? Excuse me. I mean, stereo microphones. <laughs> uh, so, left and right. Pretty cool. Um, then, next to that, you have your very loud speaker. So, when playing back video, you're not going to have to worry about the speaker being quiet. Um, it is going to be very, very loud. And I believe there is no volume control. Um, if there is, I just have not found it yet. But... At this time, there is no volume control that I have found for the speaker. Um, next over here, we have a on-off button, which uh, lights up green uh, when you turn on the camera and when it goes into sleep mode. And um, then right above that, we have our shutter button, which also accompanies the uh, zoom sw slider, or swivel, I guess you could say, because if you go left, right, zoom in and out. And then you have your first shoulder strap connection point. And now moving to the back, we have our flash indicator. <coughs> which will light up depending on what the flash is about to do. So if it does not light up, it means that the flash is not going to go off. Uh, if it lights up solid red, that means <coughs> that you are going to get, or the flash is going to... Uh, be uh, taken when you take the picture and if it's blinking a uh, red that means that the flash is charging uh, moving over here now we have our movie mode button so all you'd have to do if you want to take a video is you would press this button down and it'll jump it right over into movie mode without needing to go to any separate menu to access that so you just click this and you're right into movie mode taking your video. Uh, and below that we have a leather grip that you would put your thumb so you don't push any buttons uh, while taking a picture. Uh, moving on we have our scene selection and camera mode option. So when you would hit this it will give you some options to select from easy mode, scene selection, or auto. Uh, next to that, we have our picture preview, which when you click that, of course, you can view all of your videos and pictures that you've previously taken. Uh, next, we have our main function control wheel, <coughs> which has several options on it. Uh, the first one is, of course, the OK button, which is the main button that you would click to select things in the operating system. And then abo the, uh, the button above that is the flash toggle uh, and then we have the white balance adjustment and then we have macro and self timer and these uh, buttons here can only be configured uh, in the auto mode uh, if you're in the easy mode uh, you cannot hit these buttons to toggle those options uh, then moving down here uh, we have the menu button, which you would, <coughs> which would let you gain access to all of the main settings and features uh, behind the scenes that you would not normally see on the home screen of the camera. Uh, and then we have your standard delete button, which would delete the current photo or video. Moving to this side, we have nothing. Moving to the other side. Uh, we have our little door that you can open, and it will have HDMI, your USB out, and your AV multi out, which can be uh, used to connect to your television set. Uh, and then we also have right here a second a zooming slider, so you have two different access points for zooming uh, and then right here above that we have the uh, flash button so when you push this it would pop up the flash and then you can use your flash whenever you want and then when you're done using it you push it back down and you're ready to go <coughs> so and then on the front right here we have our orange um, 
focusing indicator. So, what this essentially is, is the camera will uh, fire this orange light in low lighting conditions, so the lens will be able to focus on the subject or object that you are wanting to take a picture of. And then, last but not least, on the front, we have our 16.1 megapixel autofocusing lens. Uh, which has 26 times optical zoom and 4 times digital zoom, which is very, very nice. You can get some far off photos uh, with the 26 times zoom. Uh, I have actually taken some pictures of the moon at night with this all the way extended out, and it has actually captured some very nice moon photos. So really really nice uh, uh, zooming function here <coughs> uh, and then moving to the bottom we have our tripod mount as well as the battery compartment and memory card compartment and do note that this camera does not take rechargeable batteries um, it takes four standard AA batteries as you can see there which I kind of prefer uh, rechargeable, but I mean that's that's me. And then right here at the very top is where you would place your memory or your SD card. There you go. And then you close it like that. And if you want to open it, you just uh, grab this little s switch here, put it to the left, push up, and then there you go. You're accessed into the camera or the battery compartment. Excuse me. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. This kind of strap's kind of in the way. Alright, but now I'm going to turn it on, show you guys the basics of the operating system, and show you some basic shooting controls. So let's go ahead and hit the power button. And you can see it lights up green when you turn it on. So here is what the home screen or home menu of the camera will look like. It's basically the shooting mode, I should actually say. So, when you're in this mode, whoops, I hit the flash button. But when you're in this mode, it'll give you some option or detailed information here. It'll show you or tell you what mode you're in. It'll tell you if you... I don't like how it kind of goes away. It's kind of annoying. Alright, and um, it'll also show your position of zoom right here. And it'll give you your focus point, your flash, battery, uh, motion detection, your focus light, your um, video quality, how much video you have left to record, how much photos you have left to record, as well as the type of megapixel you are currently in. And last but not least, it'll also show your current ISO setting. <coughs> so, to take a picture, you would just hold down the shutter button halfway so it can focus like so and then when you're ready to take the picture push it down all the way and it will take the picture like so now for something that it won't focus on as you can see I'm going to try to force it not to focus there you go it will blink red the focus point will blink red uh, letting you know that the camera cannot focus in on what you're currently taking a photo of. And it'll give you a reason as to why it can't focus. So the little one down there means that you are closer than one centimeter away, which the camera can only focus up to one centimeter with macro turned on. Uh, so now when you want to switch modes, you would hit the camera mode button there. And as you can see, I'm currently in auto. So there is four different options. You have auto, smart portrait, excuse me. All right. uh, smart portrait, scene selection, and easy mode. And another thing to note, as you can see, there's a 3D option. And that what that is, is that this camera can capture 3D photos. And the photos can be played back on a 3D LCD TV which is really, really cool. <clears throat> and then, like I said, you have easy mode, which is for the beginners to the camera that don't know too much about it. 
but my, my preferred is auto because you have basically full control over whatever you want to do. So like I was saying, if you want to control the flash, you would just push that button and raise the flash. And then you would hit the button right here that would indicate the flash. So you hit that and then you have some options here. So you can either go from auto, <coughs> um, always on with white balance, I believe. I'm not exactly sure what that option does, so don't quote me on that. Uh, and then you have off, always on, and portrait. My preferred is always on, and then when I don't want to use it, I just push down the flash uh, up here, and it'll just not take a, or fire the flash. So, and then when you're ready to take a video, you would hit the video button, and you can see it's going to jump right into video mode, and there we are. It is now recording video at tw uh, 720p, and it also gives how much video you currently have left. And the camera does not want to focus on that, oh well. But, right now I have 28 minutes and 45 seconds left. Uh, and then when you're done recording the video, you just hit that button again. And then it records it, and you're good to go. And then when you want to play back that video or picture you just took, hit the preview button, and then there you go. You can hit OK to start playing. And there we are. And you can it's hear the microphone, or the... What, uh, speaker's pretty loud. And it also gives there you go. So, and then when you want to delete a video, hit the delete button. And you get a couple options. You can either delete current image, all it, or selected images, or all images. And I just want to currently delete... Actually, no, I'm not going to delete it yet. I'll delete it later. Um, actually, I'm going to delete this photo. So you hit delete, hit yes, please wait, and there you go. Then when you want to get out of the pre uh, picture preview, you can either hit the picture preview button or the shutter button. And it'll bring you back to shooting mode. Now, just to quickly show you guys before I run out of time here. Um, Self-portrait, you can toggle it on and off. Uh, white balance, you can adjust the white balance here depending on your preference. Uh, and then you have macro mode, which you, can, which you can toggle on and off, and it'll, like I said, it'll focus all the way up to one centimeter, which is considerably close. <laughs> all right, now, <clears throat> before I run out of time here, I'm going to show you guys, give you guys a run, a real quick run through of the settings. So you have image mode, white balance, continuous settings. ISO sensitivity, so you can change the ISO depending on your preference. Uh, color options. Uh, and then we have movie options, which you can change it from VGA or 720p. Uh, and then you can choose au the uh, auto focusing mode or, and choose to uh, reduce the amount of wind noise that you are getting in your background of the video. And then we have the overall settings, where you can choose the welcome, welcome screen, time zone and date, monitor, uh, excuse me, monitor settings, print date, vibration function, and yes, this does have a vibrate function, which is pretty interesting. Uh, has motion detection, autofocus assist, sound settings, auto off, format the memory card, language, TV settings, link warning and iFi upload, reset all, battery type, and a firmware version. And what I think is cool with iFi I upload is that you can buy the iFi memory card and you can upload your pictures or videos wirelessly directly from the camera itself to um, any of your social networks or your uh, computer, which I think is really, really cool. So that's the basic settings that you will find when using this camera. So that's pretty much it. Um, it's a basic entry level, uh, excuse me, entry level camera um, for those that want to get into photography. Like I said, for those of you that want a more advanced camera, I would remiss. Uh, I can't talk right now. Sorry. Suggest getting a more high-end expensive camera But I mean this camera is great for the price 
$200, I mean, you can't beat that for this type of camera. With 26 zoom, it's fantastic. Um, also, a thing to note is you cannot add different lenses, so you're stuck with the one you have, unfortunately. So, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I fully recommend uh, you guys picking up this camera. It's good for the price. Very nice. Uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button right down there. Uh, make sure to thumbs up the video and uh, comment below if you have any questions about the camera whatsoever. I'll be sure to answer your questions. Don't be afraid to ask. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.